Hello, everyone. Thanks, Jennifer. Let me um, echo Jennifer's welcome to today's webinar, Responding to Business Change with JMOS Enterprise BRMS. My name is David Faulkner, and I'm the Program Manager for Red Hat Middleware Services. And I'll be presenting the first half of today's presentation, followed by Pratash Ranjan, who is a senior JBoss consultant at Zevia. Today we're going to be discussing business rules and decision management. We'll lay the groundwork for the business problems that we are trying to solve, and then we'll go over how JBoss Enterprise BRMS can help you solve these problems. We'll also present a real-life case study of a solution built using JBoss BRMS. So, before we get into talking about the business rules engine in particular, make sure that we're all on the same page about what business rules really are. The simplest definition is what you can see here on the slide, business-specific domain knowledge. You can see here an example for, of the same business rules an insurance company might have for its claims process. When we build software, it's easy to get caught up in all the technical details of building a UI, creating the database structure, and so on. But at the end of the day, the real goal for most software is to obtain business facts and make decisions based on those facts. Whether that decision is something as simple as approve this claim, or as complex as initiate a full legal review. Decision management is part of every business's needs, but there are some industries that immediately come to mind when we talk about decision management in general. The previous slide already mentioned an insurance company's claim decision process is an excellent use case for this. Another obvious one that it has complex business needs is an industry like banking. Whose loans do we approve? When can we execute the sell order? Those are all business rules. Decision management isn't just about making decisions about customers, however. If we consider an industry like manufacturing, a business rules engine can help to encapsulate the analytics of customer and inventory data in order to decide what future orders may look like, or even performing data analysis internally to determine whether productivity goals are being met. That's just one example that we can come up with with decision management. And of course, decisions are about responding to changes being made right now, not just analyzing data that happened in the past. We'll come back to the logistics example to talk about some of the exciting new features available in JBoss BRMS. So, even without talking about rules engines, most of us are familiar with the concept of a business layer in software development. In even the simplest of applications, it's well-established best practice to separate the business logic from the technical aspects of both the presentation and of data access. This allows us to encapsulate the business logic for reuse, but still has some pain points. As applications grow in complexity, it can be very hard to identify the relationship between the business rules as defined by the analyst during the requirements phase and the code that's necessary to implement those rules. And it becomes harder and harder to verify if the rules themselves correspond to what the business intended during the requirements process as you get further along in the development process. Also, as the rules grow more and more complex, the code necessary to implement them starts to have more and more branches, more and more execution paths, greater cyclomatic complexity, and it just in general becomes harder to test and maintain as we go as we move forward. A solution for this problem is to continue this abstraction away from the business logic using a rules engine. At the core, the idea of a business rules engine is to provide a facility to declaratively describe the business rules for the system, which are then processed to be executed efficiently. We'll go into the high-level details of this in a couple of slides. Generally, though, the rule engine allows developers and analysts to focus on what the rules are, not how to write the code. It also allows for separating the rules from the rest of the application, not just in theory, but in practice. You can even have a different life cycle for rules than for the rest of your code, as we'll see later in this presentation. There are certainly situations where having a business rules engine introduces an amount of overhead that outweighs the value of using the engine. A rule engine generally provides the most value when you have a complex domain model, complex decisions to make, or both. 
Abstracting the business rules is especially beneficial when talking about industries that are highly regulated. When changes to your business processes are sometimes out of your hands, being able to respond rapidly to new legislation, for example, is extremely valuable. Similarly, having business rules described declaratively makes their execution easier to verify and audit, increasing business confidence in highly visible automated situations. Of course, there's more to business rules than just the rule engine itself. BRMS stands for Business Rules Management System, and in addition to the rule engine, BRMS provides a repository and user interface for the creation and management of rules throughout your enterprise. It's easy to set up an environment where rules can be edited and deployed purely from a web environment, although there's a lot of flexibility available if that's a little too fast for your specific use case. So now that we've covered the groundwork for the terms that we're going to be discussing today, let's introduce JBoss Enterprise BRMS. JBoss BRMS is based upon several community products from JBoss.org. Specifically, the core of JBoss Enterprise BRMS is based upon the Drools Rule Engine, one of the longest running and most successful open source projects out there. Of course, like all of the JBoss products, JBoss BRMS undergoes significant testing and hardening through our enterprise release process before being released and officially supported and maintained by Red Hat. Of course, JBoss Enterprise BRMS is part of the broader JBoss ecosystem. At the core is our enterprise application platform, which serves as the recommended but not required application server environment for JBoss BRMS. The BRMS tool for developers are included in our unified development platform, JBoss Developer Studio. And similarly, monitoring and management for BRMS is provided by the JBoss Operations Network. JBoss Enterprise BRMS sits alongside our SOA platform. Neither requires the other, but if you have both of them, they can serve complementary functions in your enterprise, with the Enterprise BRMS serving as a management platform for the integrated JBoss rules runtime that forms a core component on the SOA platform. Digging into the details of the rule engine now, at the root of our offering is the JBoss rules engine, based upon the proven RETOO -E algorithm. This algorithm comes out of academia, so there's a lot of academic proofs around it and a, a lot of research that's been going on but it's also been used in the industry for many, many years. And this is the theoretical background for a lot of the rules engines that are out there. As discussed previously, when you write business rules using JBoss BRMS, you don't have to worry about the final execution path or writing every single branch explicitly. What you can see here in the image that's on this slide is a representation of the RET tree that's built from a set of business rules. Going deep into the details about how your business rules are converted into this type of representation is a little bit beyond what this presentation is, what this webinar is um, scoped at. But the high level overview is that your set of business rules are transformed into a RETI tree, which enables a huge number of optimizations over and above what would be possible with just a naive iterative approach to the executing the rules. So again, we use the analogy of a compiler that has a lot of optimizations that would be very difficult to go through if you're a person, but that can be automated and generalized so you get huge performance gains across the board. <clears throat> so when we talk about writing business rules, what do we mean? So JBoss BRMS gives us several options based upon your specific needs. What most business users will probably see is either BRL, business rules language, or decision tables. BRL functionality is provided by a wizard in either the web interface or the JBoss BRMS Eclipse plugin. We'll see an example of actually building a rule using this in just a couple of slides. A decision table is exactly that, a table that just lists field names and the outcomes associated with them. You can build these through a web interface or actually directly import them from an Excel file if maybe you have an existing spreadsheet that shows the decisions that you make, for example, your pricing model. Of course, if there's a need for more power than either BRL or decision tables provide, 
You can write directly in DRL, the drools rule language, which is a scripting language that provides real power when you want it. This um, uses a Java-like syntax and really provides full power of JBoss rules and really allows you to access other Java functions and other facilities that aren't immediately available outside in the DRL or decision table environment. Of course, there's no need to choose only one of these, even in a single application. It's actually fairly common for most of the work to be done in BRL or decision tables, with DRL being mixed in as needed and hidden from business users using domain-specific languages when it's the only thing that can get the job done. So flexible deployments allow you to fit rules into your environment in a way that works best for your needs. At its heart, the JBoss Rules Engine is just a set of pure Java libraries. And you can even just bundle the rules directly into your application archive and not worry about any of the other types of integration. For more realistic enterprise applications that maybe need a little bit more flexibility, JBoss BRMS provides standard functionality for deploying the rules outside of the application archive and even allowing for live updates of the rules themselves without requiring an application restart, providing a huge amount of flexibility. However, for even more flexibility, you can deploy rules as a service, either by writing a custom web service or using the rule server component to completely isolate the decision process from your application or to fit into an existing SOA or ESB architecture. Although using rules can allow for more dynamic responses to business change, using JBoss Enterprise BRMS doesn't require you to scrap your existing SDLC. One of the key design goals behind JBoss BRMS is maximum flexibility. It's relatively easy to integrate rules in any type of Java development environment and to leverage existing tools like JUnit, Jenkins, Maven, Ivy, or anything else that you're using right now that while still benefiting greatly from the encapsulation and performance offered by JBoss Enterprise BRMS. You can bring JBoss Enterprise BRMS into your business and start using it according to what your needs are, not just in the way that the designers thought you might want to use it. Of course, the rule engine is only one part of the BRMS. The JBoss Enterprise BRMS Governor functions as a full-featured rule repository for the enterprise, serving as a single point of entry for rule authoring, audit, administration, and deployment. Governor provides powerful tools to allow both business analysts and developers to create, modify, and test rules. Governor includes a guided editor for building rules and for testing, creating test scenarios for those rules, as well as providing the ability to add your own business vocabulary to the guided editor using domain-specific language. There are even powerful static analysis tools that allow you to see if you're missing rules from certain value ranges. For example, if you have a business rule for ages 18 to 30 and a rule for, over, for 45 and over, but not a rule for 30 to 45, these static analysis tools can actually warn you and make sure that you meant to leave a gap in the coverage of the possible values in your rules themselves. So we'll wait just a minute here so that everyone is able to download the movie that's on this slide that um, where we'll be able to go through because again it's very hard to see um, to know what I'm to get a full view of what I'm talking about here just talking through it so we want to have a little bit of multimedia so you can actually see the creation of a rule in the governor interface and how easy it is to get these to uh, get these types of things done going to go ahead and get started. So the first thing that you'll see here is actually the web interface for the governor. So this is actually what a business user or a developer would see logging into this web interface to begin creating rules. What you can see here is we're going to um, look at the packages, which is how rules are structured on the right. We're going to create a new rule. We're just going to give it the name demo rule. Very easy here. 
We're going to put it into a category, which is just an arbitrary way of organizing the rules. And we're just going to click OK and get started. So you can see here that we've already created some domain-specific language items here. And we've also created an enumeration. So as a business user, I don't have to worry about the syntax. I can actually just add things like when the credit rating is and have a list of values already pre there for when I create rules in the system. I can also define my actions with this domain-specific language. For example, approve the loan. You can check in your changes. So this works in the same way as perhaps a source control mechanism. So you can see exactly um, who's writing your rules and um, what the changes were when, the, when the, these items were modified. And um, at the very end there, you can see that now the new rule is there with all the other rules in the situation. So again, creating rules is very simple using this interface. So Governor isn't just a user interface for writing rules. The fully fledged repository for your enterprise has a flexible security model that allows you to give users as much or as little access to the rules across your organization as they need to get their jobs done. Governor also has detailed audit and versioning capabilities to provide visibility into who changed what where. Governor also provides deployment snapshots, binary package management, and so on for dealing with complex deployment scenarios. For users who need even more power than Governor provides, of course, JBoss Developer Studio comes with powerful support for JBoss rules integration. Drool's rule language, DRL, becomes a first class citizen of the IDE with IntelliSense for the rule syntax your fact model, and your domain-specific languages. In addition to syntax highlighting and graphical development tools, there's full IDE support for real debugging and even breakpoints in the rule source itself. Integration to the rule repository provided by Governor is provided through the standard team synchronizing interface for Eclipse. Your developers can use the Eclipse environment they're used to and stay in sync with the business analyst utilizing the guided rule editor through the web interface. One last thing that I'd like to bring up in my part of the presentation is um, the complex event processing component, which is currently a technology preview in the latest re release of JBoss Enterprise BRMS. Complex event processing is a very excited piece of technology that builds upon the existing rule engine to allow for decision making based upon real time events as they happen. Many, many slides ago, I mentioned a logistics business example that I would describe. So this is where I want to bring this up so that if you're not familiar with what CEP, the type of power that CEP can bring to your organization. The, the technology that CEP is using is used by this logistics company to feed in a stream of data that comes from their operational systems. So this is data, everything from packages arriving to planes landing to trucks going about their routes to warehouses being moved to forklifts moving around warehouses, lots and lots of these events that are coming in on a stream in real time. What the CEP component is, is it allows you to make decisions based upon that event stream and then send out requests and targeted systems. So this logistics company is actually doing things like directing traffic and deciding what truck would be best to send a package in based upon the real time data that's coming in through this data stream. So the CEP part is very exciting technology that's, again, leveraging the decision management and making decision management work not just on demand, but in real time, um, in a responsive manner. So everyone, that's all for me. Now I'd like to hand the reins of the presentation over to Paritas Ranjan from Zevia. Thanks everyone for your time. Thank you, David, for providing such an informative description of JBoss BRMS and how it can benefit any organization. Hello, everyone. I am Paritosh Ranjan. I am a senior JBoss consultant at Zevia India. I am also the lead engineer of one of the projects in Zevia, 
where we have extensively used JBoss BRMS to develop a product for a company dealing in data quality domain. I'll use a case of this project to explain how JBoss BRMS changed a complex looking project into a simple and enjoyable one. Let me provide some background of the customer before we start. The customer is a 25 year old product development company which develops bleeding edge products in data quality domain. The customer is based in Netherlands and is considered to be the European leader in data quality products. The backbone of the company is its huge collection of meaningful data. By meaningful data, I mean names and details about them. They know each and everything about names people have around the world. They know which part of name is what in different countries. They also know which name is male, which female, and which is not even a name. They also have huge data about company names. A company name can be anything, ranging from string literal to numbers to signs and symbols or a mixture of all these. These people know the string patterns which are mostly used as a company name. To analyze all this name data, they have linguists. These linguists are people who know in and out of names, their genders, the way they are written in different regions of the country, the rules which differentiate between a name and a company around the world. And trust me, it's not that simple. A male name in one country is a female in another. Putting a dot, a comma, or even brackets inside a name completely changes its meaning. So, when we started developing the product for this company, we knew there would be challenges in developing this product, some of which we knew beforehand. Let's talk about some of them. As already mentioned, the business domain was highly complex. Apart from being complex, it was also a completely new business domain all to together for the developers. Different countries had different cultures, region, way of writing, as well as interpretation of names. All this name business was not that easy to digest. The linguists had learned this art after proper study and experience, and they were highly sensitive towards the correctness and quality of the results. Apart from this, the complex business domain, second major problem was the uncertainty revolving around the concept of the product to be developed. The company was not sure of what to build as the current market trends were not clear. They were not sure of what exactly could be sold in the market. Though they had a fair idea of the market based on their previous products, but the concept of next generation product was not clear. What they were sure of was a strong knowledge of the business. These challenges made it clear that the business logic is going to be messy. Some processes which were not easily understandable by human brain were supposed to be molded into a computer program. These challenges were not the only challenges that the product offered. There were many more that we faced during development. The product was built on top of huge collection of names, which we talked about in the first few slides. The application used to search the names repository and then apply complex business logic on it, transform it into a meaningful result. Every time the data to be searched changed behind the scenes, the business logic needed to be tweaked and stabilized as suggested by the linguists. The other challenge was the unpredictability of results. There were instances where the business logic was not guaranteeing the results. The logic was supposed to be applied, analyzed, and then tweaked to see whether it worked or not. Based on the result of one set of logic, the linguists came out with a set of changes in the complete business flow. In a nutshell, the development cycle involved frequent injection, deletion, and modification of code. Well, based on what we saw till now, a framework or a technology was needed which would have empowered the team to play around with the business logic with utmost ease. Here, a question can pop up. Why a different framework or technology? We could have also developed this in Java, as Java was the main language being used for development of the product. The answer is, if you would have chosen Java, then the total development time would have increased by 10 times for sure, if not less. And apart from this, the quality of the application would have degraded a lot, as it would have resulted into massive increment in the number of bugs. The speed and frequency with which we change business logic every now and then would not have been possible if Java or any other object-oriented programming language was used. Just imagine writing a highly complex system using Java, then think of shuffling and twisting the system's logic in any possible way or order you can think of, and then try to write the application logic again. 
Well, it's not difficult for sure, and some people will also enjoy doing it. However, I'm sure you'll agree that it would not be a piece of cake. It would be a pain to do this, and the result of all this exercise will be a delayed product with huge number of bugs. Let's try to answer why we choose JBoss BRMS as a technology for development. Let's start with functional advantages first. JBoss BRMS can be used to add business logic very easily. The business logic is completely separated from the application code. So changing the business process never has any impact on other parts of the application. Similar business processes can also be grouped together which helps in keeping the product maintainable. Both developers and business people can write rules in JBoss BRMS as it provides developer-centric as well as business analyst-centric rule writing syntaxes. There are also several technical advantages of using, using JBoss BRMS. JBoss BRMS provides a rule scripting language which is very similar to Java in syntax. Along with this, it also provides some utility methods. The rules can easily validate, select, transform, create, and delete data. All these utilities used together can write any business logic. Along with this, JBoss BRMS can execute all this complex logic on a bulk of objects very easily. Shuffling and reordering the rules is also very simple. The rules execute one after another in a single thread, and JBoss BRMS also supports parallel execution of threads. Java functions can also be called from the rules. This helps a lot in complex scenarios. We'll talk more about this topic later. Since the syntax of writing rules is almost like Java, the syntax learning curve is very low. And there is also an Eclipse plugin available, which really helps in speeding up the development. Before going into the implementation of rules in the product, I'll talk a bit about the product so that the implementation of rules can be understood. The product is about data cleansing in a particular name cleansing. It passes any string and tells whether it is a valid name or a company and details about the different parts. It also tells whether the name is male or female and where it is found in the world along with different forms in which it can be written. In the next few slides, we'll dig deep into how JBoss BRMS helped in the development of these functionalities. As I told earlier, the business domain was highly complex and the product idea was really unclear. So, finalizing all the product features when both the business domain and the market was unknown would have been suicidal. What actually was needed was an iterative model of development, which would have let the business analysts and other stakeholders have a concrete view of the direction of the project. Every iteration should have produced a product which could be analyzed and further actions and decisions could be taken based on it. In Zebia, we practice Agile religiously. Generally, we have iterations of two, three weeks. After every iteration, or say two, three weeks, we deliver, de deliver a shippable product. The product and its functionalities are demoed to the customer after every iteration. The demo can be attended by anyone related to the product, be it the business analyst or the CEO or any prospective user of the product. Feedback gained after demoing the product drives the future iteration. Using this methodology helped in many ways. With every iteration, the developer's understanding of the business domain improved, and watching the working product helped the business analyst and other stakeholders take better decisions on what to do next. After every iteration demo, next iteration was planned, which usually added logic on top of existing code. Along with this, features found useless were removed mercilessly, and many a times a complex, a complete revamp of the logic was done. JBoss BRMS made all this possible by enabling us to add rules one upon one. Every new rule brought with it some changes in some other rules. The rules were very easy to modify. So it was very comfortable to add new rules, remove them, shuffle them, and change them. So all this led to development of a product that evolved with time. Now let's get a bit technical. Let's talk about what actually we did with JBoss BRMS. To explain all that, I will have to explain two basic structures on which all the rules work. These were tag and tag combination, as you can see on slide. Let's take a name, Tom Cruise. I hope you know him. So each part of the string, Tom and Cruise are tags. 
and that combination is the wrapper around these tags. These objects were created, I will say designed to let us search the names repository. For the input string parts, each search result was marked as a tag and was thrown in JBoss BRMS rule engine. After we threw all the tags in the rule engine, the business logic present in the form of rules ran there and transformed and combined the tags into meaningful tag combinations which came out as a result from rule engine. You can see tag and tag combination having several properties. The rules played a lot with these properties. They added new objects, removed useless objects, and modified existing objects to provide a meaningful output. So this was how the business logic of Linguist was molded into a software program. The rules were categorized to make them maintainable and extensible. Some examples of the Categories are shown here. The rules were categorized into groups based on their business domain. When any business logic needed some change, it was very easy to find the correct place to do it. This segregation kept the application clean, understandable, maintainable, and extensible. As you can see on the slide, we had different rules for different purposes, different set of rules for companies, for different parts of a name, and so on. Now let's see some of the rules in action. Let's start with a rule which finds objects satisfying a particular condition and removes it from the rule session. This speeds up further processing as after this, other rules have less objects to work on. As shown in the slide, these two rules find out tag or tag components satisfying a particular condition and throw them out of the rule engine. Sometimes, some things can be written in a better way in Java than in rules. Let us assume that we need to inspect the database for evaluating a certain condition. Java code would be a much better place to do it rather than doing it in rules. Sometimes a complex calculation might be needed to evaluate a condition or there can be a need to update the database or any external entity when some rule condition is satisfied. All this can be achieved in rules easily as it allows to call Java methods from rules. Here we can see an example of calling a Java method from a rule. Similarly, inserting new objects into rules is also possible. Here we can see how a tag combination is being created and inserted into the rule session. The rules written in JBoss PRMS can also be tested using JUnit. So it's not required to wait till the deployment of the application to test the business logic. Using JUnit tests, the impact of new change in business flow can be analyzed and controlled beforehand. This helps in speeding up the development as well as keeping a check on the quality. The rules were written in an abstract manner which made it very easy to plug them in and out. Abstract rules were also reusable most of the time. So it was a plug and play architecture. Appropriate plugs change the product from one thing to another in a very short interval of time. After JBoss BRMS was, was completely integrated in the product, adding new functionality was like a piece of cake. Most of the times, just wrote a rule of five lines and some new functionality was there. Of course, you need to design your application in a way that allows you to do this. When a large set of rules exist on which the application runs, then it is obvious that there is a need to log things. Though there is support of Debugging the rules using the Eclipse plugin, it will not help in production environment. Sometimes it's necessary to log particular scenarios. To achieve this, JBoss PRMS provides listeners which can be activated on various activation points of the rules. So, rules getting fired can be logged along with the data it was processing and all that happened to that data. This helps in having a high level view of the business flow. Let's talk about performance a bit. We have found that JBoss BRMS has a very high performance rule engine inside it. The reason behind this efficiency is the way its rule engine has been built. The rule engine is an implementation of Rete algorithm, which is a highly efficient pattern matching algorithm. The engine caches and reuses lots of stuff, due to which executing similar logic again and again on a number of objects is done very efficiently. As you can see in the picture, the time taken by rule engine is linear, although the load was not non was nonlinear here. 
To summarize all this, we can say that JBoss DRMS provides solution to problems which look completely unsolvable in the beginning. It makes us believe that there are efficient and easy solutions even to the most complex problems in the world. If you'd like to learn more about the interesting work we are doing in JBoss world around the world, check out the web link in front of you or reach us at jboss at zbia.com. Zebia has dedicated JBoss competency along with excellent agile practices which enables us to develop high quality enterprise applications for our customers all around the globe. That's all gentlemen. David, can you take it over from me? Absolutely. Thanks so much for um, going over that case study with us, Paratosh. Um, so this is David Faulkner again, um, just going through um, some of the questions. You know, again, there are you all, um, if it wasn't clear, welcome to ask questions in the Q&A section of the WebEx control panel, and we're happy to answer them. Um, we have a few, but, you know, we're happy to answer more. So. The first one I'll look at um, is something that I'm going to take in two parts, which is that if you're a current Drools user using the community version, how does how can you use JBoss BRMS and what's, what are the advantages thereof? So the first part of that is that Drools itself is the open source community version of the JBoss Enterprise application. JBoss BRMS. So just like the enterprise application platform, the process is that Red Hat and JBoss um, takes a specific version, release candidate, that we decide is going to be the enterprise BRMS version. So once we get this community version, we take it through a long, complex um, hardening process and QA process to make sure that we feel confident about it so that we can go with the second part of what we do, which is our support process. So the community is focused around release early, release often. That's where the innovation happens, and they're moving through versions quite quickly. What the enterprise BRMS is for is to provide for the needs of our enterprise customers. We release fairly regularly, but certainly not at the pace of the community version. And again, we provide three years of full support and seven years of maintenance support for every released version of JBoss Enterprise BRMS. So you get the advantage of having you know, the, the strong community project of Drools, but then you get the flip side of the full award-winning support that Red Hat provides. Now, if you're already a Drools community user, um, the components that are supported are the um, Drools Expert and Drools Governor, which form the basis, and Drools Fusion, which, as I mentioned, is the complex event processing model, which is part, uh, which is in technology preview at this point. So, th that's um, if you have rules that are written, um, you can easily move those over into the enterprise supported version. There's no fundamental difference between the two products. Okay. Um, there's another question that's come up, which I will take, um, is that the question has become, um, if there's a way to get a copy of the uh, first 20 minutes of the presentation, the entire presentation will be available online. I think that um, Jennifer will be giving that after we finish the rest of the, of the um, other questions, but certainly the, this presentation will be available later. Okay. Um, okay, another question. So the question um, is that, you know, are the rules easily readable and can, you know, a real, can, is it really so that a business person can write and modify the rules? So, Puritas, you want to take that one? Both the developers and business can write rules. Uh, so, generally we write rules in a DRL, but uh, JBoss BRMS also provides support of DSLs, in which the rules are actually English sentences, like if this condition was true, or you can just write in plain English. And sometimes you can also have things into an Excel file and pick uh, things from there and the thing 
the things data in the Excel file are just plain English line. So business analyst can easily use it. Great. Yeah, absolutely. So um, just to add on top of that, what we normally say is that it, it, it's not so much that you know anyone off the street can you know immediately jump in and be a productive business rules user. What we more often say is that you have to have at least some degree of technical capability. But if someone can write an Excel macro or can write a SQL query, a very basic SQL query, because obviously that can get pretty complicated, but they could certainly you know add, actively participate in a rules development project. Okay. Um, so next question, um, is there any relation between the number of rules and the time taken to execute them? Um, I'll throw this one over to you, Peritas, as well. Um, it is almost no relation between the number of rules that you have, the time it takes to execute it. You know, uh, the rule engine is based on a rated tree. So the rated tree is built only once. So even if the number of rules is around 1,000 or 10,000, the tree will be built only once and the execution is almost instant. So you will almost never see any difference in the time taken uh, by, uh, to execute the rules if you just keep on increasing the rules. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. So, okay, the next question is, um, can rules be ported from another rules engine to JBoss BRMS? And I'm not going to name any particular rules engines um, here, but I also have um, some professional experience with several of the other vendors in the space. So, as of right now, there's not a standard rule language. Um, all of the vendors are proprietary. Um, I think that you'll find that they're equivalents to the both the rules rule language and the um, other rule languages that are available from other vendors. There is, although there's a standard for rule languages that is being developed by one of the major standards groups, it's very, very, very young, and uh, there hasn't been a lot of progress made, honestly, in implementing that by any of the major vendors. That being said, there's not an easy way where you can just take the source code that's been written in another rule language and drop it into a new rule engine. However, the, the concepts that mo almost all of the rules engines that are available out there are extremely similar and although there would need to be some porting process, it would not be significant. This is not like moving from, for example, a .NET infrastructure to a Java infrastructure. Certainly there'd be some work involved and it would be a porting project, but it's, again, most of the major vendors that are out there have very similar models for how they work and can you can port from um, one of the others to the JBoss BRMS system. Okay. So there's a question. Um, do you have to design the system in a specific way to achieve all of this stuff that you've been talking about? Um, and so again, I'll, I'll, I'll hand this over to Paratosh to talk about his case study experience. Uh, on a very generic level, I'll say no, because the rule engines generally work on different objects. And that's actually what we have in an application. We have different objects with which we play around, we change things, we add things and all. So on a very generic level, I'll say no. But on a very low level, I mean, when you are deep into the code, and then I'll say that uh, you might need to change some things so that the rule engine uses it uh, efficiently, right? So when you are really into a rule engine and you know how it works, then you'll automatically switch to that thing, switch to changing your objects and all in a particular way so that it can be used more efficiently. But on a very high level, any application can use it. Yeah, I think Paratosh really um, captures what um, we look at this here. There's certainly a lot that you can do, you know, from a tuning perspective and from, you know, as you, as you gain experience with the rule engine, you'll start finding more and more ways to get even more and more out of it. But you can certainly start bringing a rule engine in and out of the box you'll already find it um, works very well. 
Um, one of the really strong advantages I find with the JBoss Enterprise BRMS system as opposed to other rule engines on the market is that they really do require you to change your process and adopt the way that the designers of that system anticipated you using the system, not being able to work with it um, on your own. One of the big things that I love about you know the BRMS system that we have is that it is very flexible, and you can start using it and start seeing the advantages. And you know, obviously, there's a lot that you can do to make things even better, but you can start using it right out of the box. It's not a huge adoption process. It's going to take your organization years to be able to see any value from. Okay, so. Are there any other questions from the um, audience? Um, and if not, I think we'll hand things back over to Jennifer. So if, um, I'm not seeing any more questions coming in. So uh, Jennifer, do you want to take back over? And thanks everyone very much for your time today. All right, thank you, David. And that does conclude the conference call for today. We thank you for your participation. As David mentioned, we did record the session today and we'll be making that available for you uh, to view if you missed any portion of the recording. Uh, thanks again for your participation. You may now disconnect. Have a wonderful day.